Hey everyone, welcome to week 49. This is day three, this is Wednesday. This is our around the block week. Remember, if you can do it, awesome, but do it safely. If you can't do it, you can do it from your window. Speaking about that, you know, that's probably something that I had to do for today's painting. So we'll see how we do today. Okay, let's get started. Uh, this is gonna be day three. This is our ongoing around the block week. And remember the intent for this week is to push ourselves to see if we can go out and it's a very simple, just walk, stroll around the block. And what we're doing is this small painting excursion, this little expedition uh, with the hopes, yes, of socializing our neighborhood. Yes, of saying, hey, this is what my neighborhood looks like but not necessarily in the traditional sense. It doesn't mean that you have to paint like a street view of where you live. If you want to do that, if you're comfortable with that, that's awesome. But for me, I kind of knew that that was not going to be the case. I'm hopeful, and I'm being very honest with myself, I'm hopeful that the reason that I don't do these traditional kind of urban landscapes is not because I'm afraid of them, because deep down I know I'm terrified of perspective and I kind of don't know how to bend those rules in a way in which it makes sense for me. I think I have to embark and this is probably like a future endeavor but I should make it one of my life's efforts to try and see if I could redefine perspective for myself because I do think it's kind of hindering you know I think it's stopping me from exploring certainly places but more importantly moments in nature that can be wonderful catalysts for painting and I have to do a little bit better and I do think that it is lack of knowledge and most importantly just physical fear <laughs> the things that are holding me back those two things actually are tied together but here's the thing I don't know if I want to just be good at perspective in order to depict faithfully, almost like at an architectural level, to be able to depict what is in front of me. I don't know if I'm super interested in those things. I mean, one of the painters that I admire the most is Antonio Lopez. And Antonio Lopez has a ridiculous degree of natural observational skills. I mean, he is constantly checking angles and distances. When you look at his urban landscapes, his cityscapes, they are absolutely tremendous. When I've seen some of those paintings in real life, I'm shocked. I mean, I'm in awe of them and they completely move me. But I don't know if my efforts would lead to a place like that of Antonio Lopez. I, I don't think they would. I think I have a very, very different personality. And I think I've told you guys before, but one of the painters that I just really connect with the most in terms of how he dealt with urban landscapes. We're talking like a century ago, but regardless, they were urban landscapes, um, is Chile. And Chile was able to, through design, he was able to understand how to reorganize that information that he saw in nature and make paintings and drawings that really, really get to the core of who I am. I mean, it's very curious, but I really feel he is one of my favorite landscape painters because of that reason. Through him, there is this immense amount of reinterpretation of nature. Like he's able to take all the information and he's able to understand it, I feel. And then he's able to like reorganize it and reconfigure it in a way where he wants to exhibit, again, these flat shapes, this flat design rhythm in just masterful ways. So what I think is stopping me from getting to those places is just kind of encountering the problem head on. It's just saying I'm going to take a couple of months, I'm going to take a year to see how I understand this. It's not just about being able to replicate nature and to find a horizon line and to understand vanishing points. It's not so much about that for me. But for some reason, when I encounter like all these houses and all these apartment buildings outside, I'm completely overwhelmed. I see so much information out there that I don't know how to tackle it through painting. I really don't. And what bothers me the most is that I don't know how to synthesize it through painting. I, I don't really comprehend how to do it simply, how to attack it simply. That's always bugged me. Like I could always say, well, if you give me a couple of weeks, I can figure this out. You know, I can paint and repaint and redraw and check everything. And I might as well at that point, just do a horizon line and check my vanishing points. That's something I know I could do. 
And I know I would have to have my disciplined hat on. <laughs> That's not a hat I wear almost ever. <laughs> but I know that for those exercises, I would have to. I would have to become a far more disciplined painter. But I think that my goal, my end goal, would be to see how I reorganize like all this information, you know, how I would make that apartment building my own, how I would make that house my own. Because there's this beautiful aspect of painting that can be about registering nature, about making a journal out of nature. And that's wonderful. And I think that that's what, for example, James Gurney does, which, you know, blows my mind. I can't express how much I you know, adore what James does and, and how in awe I am of all the encounters that he has, you know, through painting. Th that's absolutely amazing. But the thing is, I don't really see myself as that sort of painter. I see myself as understanding and experiencing nature in a kind of different way. And sometimes I feel bad. I, I tell myself, no, I should be capable of doing what James does. And then I tell myself, well, not really. I mean, I can try and do the things that I can do. And then what I can be sure of doing is just celebrating that there's a person like James, who's an absolute genius, doing what he does. You know, he fills up all the spaces that I just can't fill. And I think that that's how we should view art always. We should just understand ourselves as this kind of tiny little peg. And we are satisfying, you know, in this ocean of possibilities, we're just satisfying this tiny little moment. And there's no artist in the world. It doesn't matter how amazing you are. It doesn't matter how Rembrandt you are. There's no artist in this planet that is going to be able to cover all of the sensible opportunities and possibilities that can be found in this ocean. That's just impossible. There's certainly artists that are going to occupy like a large larger area, while others like myself were going to be little droplets that fall upon the ocean. But it doesn't matter. We have to acknowledge that that's who we are. That's what we can do. You know, we're not being complacent about the range that we may have, but we are honestly coming to terms with the artist and the person that we are. I'm pretty sure that I know who I am as a painter. So I know that I can't fill those shoes, even though that may be frustrating at times and we may be super hard on ourselves and we kind of tell ourselves, no, we should work harder to try and be all these different types of painters just wrapped up into one to be like the perfect painter, the perfect professional, all wrapped into one. And there are for sure a lot of industries, for example, animation industry and video game industry, they love if you can do a ton of things and you can do a ton of things at a very, very high level. That is a great professional. So if you're a concept designer and you can do a ton of things and you can do them really, really well, that's amazing. I mean, if you can be an environmental designer as well as a character designer, that's, that's awesome. That's absolutely awesome. But I think that we can't punish ourselves if we realize that we don't have the ability or we don't have the experience or we don't have just the sensibility and the interest to be all those things at the same time. So again, I kind of know that about myself and I think that it is going to be important for myself to say, hey, I'm, I should be able to tackle this problem and to make it my own. I have to really try to figure this out. But I think that that takes time. If all the things that have happened to me in painting, through painting, serves as any sort of experience, that tells me that these sort of things don't happen in a couple of weeks or, you know, not even a couple of months. They actually take a long time because you have to really, really figure things out. So I'm hoping that the effort that I did on Monday, yes, it is an organic painting, which I actually really, really like, that I connected with and that I think harkens back to elements that I love that are present in one of my favorite favorite painters ever, which is Edwin Dickinson, there's this very abstract kind of moody, even though there's sunshine in there, but it is still kind of moody tone to the painting. And there are moments throughout the painting, kind of sprinkled throughout the painting where I wanted to ground the painting, you know, where I wanted to have a little more specificity in terms of my shapes, in terms of the contrast, in terms of the drawing. So I really liked it. it. You know, navigating a painting in a Dickinson way is something that's incredibly fascinating. And maybe that sounds a little too abstract, but if you delve into Edwin Dickinson's work, you can actually start kind of recognizing what I what I'm referring to when I say that you navigate, you know, a painting like Dickinson. So uh, that was Monday's effort. And for yesterday, for Spanish Tuesdays, I wanted to see if I could tackle one of the uh, subject matters that, you know, has terrorized me <laughs> throughout my life. And I think that 
The reason that it has done so is the same reason that I identify when I'm thinking about urban landscapes. Cars, for me in particular, have always been this subject matter that is full of problems. I've always tried to paint them and, and tackle them as if I was a designer. And the truth is, I am so not a designer. Like, I have no clue what I'm doing if I'm trying to resolve a subject matter like a car as if I was a designer. I, like, I can't do that. I've come to accept that. That is a void that I think is always going to be present in my painting career. So I don't know if you guys remember, but, you know, for the fear week we did, you know, many months ago now, I painted this little red Skoda car and it was really nice, you know. Uh, I was saying yesterday how I didn't really feel that I was trying to do anything but paint the car. For me, it was a big enough triumph to just say, hey, I'm capable of painting a car. <laughs> and it was a boxy little car, so it actually made me think about planes and perspective. So it was actually really fun to be disciplined enough at that moment to make this painted sketch of this little car. But I always thought that that was a very simple first encounter. I told myself, hey, you know, pat on the back, you were able to paint a car, that's nice. But I felt that I didn't push things enough while I was painting. I mean, because I was absolutely panicking. So what I was trying to do was just say, hey, I painted it. I ticked that box. Like, that weight is off my shoulders now. But the truth is, I wanted to see if I could start introducing some of the things that I, I like about painting in general into trying to solve a problem like a car. And I think that that's exactly the sort of thing that I have to do if I'm going to be able to say, I made that building my own, I made that house my own. And again, these are baby steps. But for yesterday's painting, as soon as I saw that truck, that little van, I was like, I got to do this. You know, this is an awesome opportunity to paint. And I was like, yeah, this is part of the neighborhood, part of my walk. This actually speaks about you know, those tiny little moments where there are these like small businesses around the block. So yes, I want to paint this little van, but I told myself, but come on, you, you have to start pushing a little bit more. You have to dig in a little deeper. As was the case with Friday's painting where I was speaking about pushing and inevitably Ashley Wood just popped into my brain and I was like, okay, I'm going to push in the sense that Ashley pushes. I'm going to distort and I'm going to push gesture and I'm going to push proportions. And it was really fun to do that painting. So for this painting, as soon as I saw that truck, and I thought of Ian McHugh, who's an illustrator, a wonderful concept designer. And he does a ton of stuff. He does like all these, I guess, steampunkish ships and cities that are kind of cobbled together. They're amazing. You know, his sense of design is just remarkable. Once you kind of recognize the manner in which he works, you, you can spot one of his floating ships from a mile away. You know, you're like, okay, that's Ian McHugh. And he's a genius. He's, he's an absolute genius. I, I love his sense of design. There's always like a sense of verticality in the stuff that he does. So this little van just gave me that kind of vibe and I was like okay I'm gonna push some of the vertical gestures of the van and I'm gonna give it my best shot I'm gonna try to make this painting my own um, coincidentally I was super happy when I finished that painting and I think the day after Angela Sung Ango Ango Mango <laughs> she's an incredible artist I mean her gouache paintings oh my god they kick major ass but anyways Ango posted this car on Instagram and I was like, oh my God, I was feeling good about my car. I thought it had some personality. And then Angela goes ahead and does her thing. And I was like, oh, <laughs> the road, the road is long. <laughs> you know, there's so many things to learn. But I actually really liked that I was able to leave an imprint behind in this little car and actually try and make it my own. Now, of course, you know, this always sounds weird because here I am saying, I'm going to try to push Friday's painting. And then I immediately think of Ashley Wood. And yesterday I told myself, come on, you have to try and make this your own. And, <laughs> and in trying to make it my own, I thought of Ian McHugh. So it's very hard and it's especially tough when these incredible artists just occupy areas of your brain to just leave them behind and to say, yeah, 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 I know what to do. I know exactly how to make them my own. Their wonderful work becomes stepping stones for what we are trying to do, for the problems that we are trying to solve. So again, this is not about being 
kind of mean to yourself and saying, oh, you're such a hack. You're always leaning on all these great artists. You can't figure anything out on your own. No, no, don't punish yourself for those things. That's, that's not cool. Uh, just tell yourself, hey, I'm just celebrating something that I really love with the hopes of eventually understanding how I can deal with it myself. That, that's all we have to say. And that's actually like an honest truth. And there's nothing weird or wrong about that. We just have to be genuinely honest about celebrating their work through our efforts. And that's totally fine, I feel. So that was Monday's and Tuesday's painting. And then for today, I actually wanted to do something a little bit different. We were able last week to go outside and walk around and we didn't know this at the time, but our mayor declared quarantine again. And for this week and next week, we have to stay at home and we can only go out to do necessary things. We can go out to the pharmacy or we can go out to the bank or we can go out to the uh, grocery store, but that's kind of about it. So I was thinking about the constant fluctuation that this reality is actually pushing us to accept. Here we were trying to reestablish, to reconstruct the relationship we have with our neighborhood and with our surroundings. And, you know, at the drop of a dime, all of a sudden you're told, hey, things are not great anymore. We have to stay home again for about two weeks. And we have to do this to try and lower all these percentages that are going up. ICUs are like at capacity throughout the city. So we have to play our part in all of this. And I'm very accepting of the nature of how things are nowadays. And I was looking out our window and I was very conscious of these restrictions. And then suddenly I spotted a wonderful, anonymous, you know, essential worker just doing his job, just He's picking up trash, cleaning up the streets, these almost invisible jobs done by incredible people that go absolutely unnoticed. These people can't afford to say, no, I'm going to stay home. They have to go out. They work for the city. They have to keep doing their job so that the city can actually function. And I was like, I have to paint him. And I have to acknowledge the separation that there is between us, the very unfortunate separation that there is between us. Because of people like him, the city is still a living, breathing thing. You know, the city is still alive. And you can actually look out your window and you don't see trash and your streets are clean and the park in front of us looks really nice. But it's entirely because of people like him that can't afford to say, yeah, I'm going to stay at home. They have to go out and work. I was reminded of all these paintings that were done like turn of the century, you know, end of the uh, 19th century, where you would see all these painters painting from their hotel rooms and they would look down on the streets and they were trying to capture the liveliness of that street. Now, this is not quite that, but it still is this kind of painting from above. And I'm actually super conscious of what that means, of saying I can actually be at my home. I respect workers like him just tremendously. But the fact is, is that I am looking down at this person doing his job. And oof, it's just a strong reality. It's just a very strong moment. And it's a very simple image when you think about it. I guess without context, it would just be somebody that works for the city walking down the street doing their job. But I think that because of the consciousness, because of the relationships that I was trying to reestablish with my surroundings just by walking around and saying, okay, how can I understand myself as part of this neighborhood and myself through painting? Um, I realized the huge disconnect, the, you know, how fragile that connection is and how my job just differs completely to the one of this wonderful human being that day in, day out goes out and does his job for the city. So I thought it was a painting that I needed to paint, just a tiny little moment that I needed to paint. It really puts everything into perspective and makes me every single day feel lucky about being able to share this very strange moment surrounded by my family, by the people that I love. But I think today has a different energy and it is about accepting a distance, accepting a disconnect between what we do in my case, being a painter and the fact that I'm sheltered by the place that I live in and I can do my job from our apartment and then a person that in many ways has no choice and they just have to see this as any other day of their lives and they just have to keep doing their job in order for us to say, my city, my neighborhood, they still feel like places that I can call my own. It's a very small gesture, but um, it's definitely a painting that made me uh, reflect upon not only my place in this neighborhood, but my place in society and my role in society as a whole.
and the very real differences that there are between us. So a painting journey can take us to all these places. You know, it can take me to saying, you know, comparatively very superficial things is, oh, I'm so scared of perspective and I have to try and find a way to reimagine perspective for myself to saying, wow, that's a great little van and I want to tackle this and I want to charge it with character. And I do think that those things are wonderful, but we can't cover up the reality that's underneath. So it was an opportunity to have a sense of gratitude uh, through painting. That was it for today. A, a kind of different take on this problem, but I think a necessary one and a necessary moment of reflection. I think that tomorrow and Friday, I'm going to use some of the images that I was able to collect in that small walk that I did last week. So we're going to go back to those things and we'll see how we do. So thank you guys for hanging out. Uh, please join us tomorrow where we try to, through painting, gain a little bit of understanding of the uh, place that we occupy in this tiny little moment of the universe that is our neighborhood. So I'll see you guys tomorrow. Thank you. Bye.